I'm back. It's been a while since we've done a video, but we have a few bags that are sitting in the shop. Um, so I thought it'd be fun to do a video. It's always a little bit better to see the details and the size of the bag in a video than just in pictures. So let's jump right in. We have three gorgeous Delilahs, three Sarahs, and a couple oddballs. So I'm going to start with the oddballs. Um, starting with this one, let me get the strap. And in case you noticed, I did dye my hair. <laughs> I had it blonde for our wedding, or not blonde, but like the balayage. So my natural roots and then blonde um, for our wedding. And then after the wedding, before the honeymoon, I dyed it purple and it's still purple and I like it. So, and I'm actually wearing a sweater that I crocheted <laughs> that kind of matches and my nails are purple and my eyeshadow is purple just obviously my favorite color um but anyways i even tried to curl my hair which i'm not very good at and my hair is pin straight but so it just kind of looks messy but i tried but anyways we're here to talk about bags not my hair so this is a design that i don't really offer very often um I think I call it the square crossbody. It's a very cute design, and this is Penny Bison, and it's very square, which is why I call it square crossbody, but it's such a unique shape and a unique design, and this leather, being a bison leather, is nice and thick, but it's also squishy, so it's got a little bit of squish and give to it. You can kind of squish it, um, but if you have stuff in there, it's really going to hold that shape. And this general shape, even with kind of a squishy leather, is going to hold because of the way that it is um, put together and just having these seams and this nice gusset here. And with this bag, I actually did solid brass hardware. Usually I always do antique brass, but this was for that show I did in November and I had some brass hardware still just sitting around. I thought it went well with the Penny Bison, so I've been using it, I'm trying to use up the last of the solid brass. Even the rivets are solid brass on this one, so it all goes together. Uh, nice braided strap and then a bridal leather strap. I don't usually do bridal leather, but again, I just have some. So I decided to use it for this bag because it goes really well on all of these elements. I like the dark brown with this orangey, delicious bison. So here's what it looks like with the braided shoulder strap. Um, it's got enough room, I feel like, but it's nice and nice short strap there. And then, of course, and it's just because I'm wearing such a fluffy sweater that it's kind of got a lot of grip right here on this raw side. And then with the crossbody, as you probably know, all my bags, I love for them to be crossbody. So, and of course, all the straps are removable. So if you don't want this here, you can remove it. But I think it's just a nice element. That's what it looks like. It's not huge, but it's a nice size. And then we have a lovely large external pocket, nice and big. And there's an internal pocket with a panel zipper um, that is closed on this side and then separating on this side. So it's nice and secure, but when you open it, it will separate on this side. So you have a little bit more room to get in there. There's the internal pocket, nice and fuzzy interior. So that's this bag. I really like it. Um, I've always meant to make one of these for myself to keep, maybe in tan Kodiak, that'd be really pretty, but I just don't keep that many bags because I don't need that many. I work from home. <laughs> Rare occasion I do go out, it's yeah, not very often. We did go out for my birthday though, that was fun. We went to the movies, saw the new um, Studio Ghibli, Ghibli, I might be saying that wrong, uh, Miyazaki movie, The Boy and the Heron. I've been a fan of his movies since I was a kid. I used to rent my neighbor Totoro from Blockbuster when I was a little kid and I had no idea who he was or what it was. And then I got older and I discovered all his other movies and I'm not like a big anime manga nerd, but I'll do Miyazaki, I love Miyazaki. So 
we went and saw the new movie. It was really fun. So this little crossbody is Nut Horween and some wool. And it's really, really cute. Um, also, the strap on this one is a little different. Let me show you. It's an infinity strap. So it goes, instead of just having a tail that goes through the buckle, it goes all the way around into the buckle so that you have more adjustability than just a tail. Because instead of being able to just adjust for this length, you can adjust for that whole length that goes all the way around. I hope that makes sense. So this is what I'm calling an infinity strap. And again, this is in the nut brown. And I thought that would be really useful for this kind of bag because you'll have more adjustability to where it is a crossbody, either on your hip or on your chest or back, or as a hip bag. Um, and this one was the first one I've ever made. It is a prototype. And I really do want to make some that are lined because I think that would add a lot of versatility as well and add more pockets on the inside. So it's a really cute little bag. It's got little pull tabs for the zipper and of course a braided zipper pull um, and the infinity strap. So it can be worn crossbody, super light, tiny little carry but it fits my phone, my wallet, everything that I would need. Technically, I just carry too much stuff. Um, so it does hold a lot of stuff. Or you could wear it with the infinity strap. You can tighten it like this. I've seen a lot of people wearing bags like this these days, which I think that's pretty cute. Or, because it's so adjustable, it can go this tight. And you can wear it as a little hip pack. So super cute, super versatile. Um, I really love it. Once I figure out how to line these, I'm absolutely going to make myself one that is lined because it's just so cute and I love the wool and leather together. And then that's how the D-rings are. So they're able to go cross body or around your hip. So the strap can move a lot. So I have them on an angle there. I hope that makes sense. So very adjustable, super versatile little bag. And I was really excited about this. I got a lot of messages. And if a design does well, I'll keep making it. Um, but this one didn't sell right away. So I'm not sure if it's a design that will do well or if I just need to make more that have lining and just advertise it better. <laughs> I didn't advertise it very well, um, so I'm just not sure if this design is desirable or not, but I think it's super cute. So this one is on the website. Next, let's go over, I'm going to borrow that strap actually. The next bag, I stole its strap for a Christmas gift bag, um, so I need to make this one a new strap. So I'll just borrow this one for a minute. But this it's a Sarah tote. Now most of my Sarah totes have a zipper, but this one has a snap. So for that last show, um, the in-person shows, usually bags that are on the lower end of the price range are more likely to sell in in-person shows like that because people just don't go to those wanting or expecting to spend too much money, especially near the holidays. They're looking for gifts for people. So it's good to have a lot of small goods or lower priced goods. So I made some totes that didn't have a zipper, didn't have a lining so that they'd be priced a little lower and hopefully more likely to sell. I did sell a few of them. So this is Nut Brown Horween and it has a nice little snap. Super gorgeous, simple, classic little tote. Absolutely love these. Um, I just personally need a zipper for myself because I'm always spilling my bag. Um, so it has an internal pocket, an external pocket, no lining. So you get the yummy interior of that Horween leather. And then um, I'll make it another strap. I had to steal a strap for a Christmas bag because I made them the day before we gave those gifts. And I was like, I don't have time to make another strap. So I stole this strap because it was the same leather and I'll make this one another strap. Just 
yeah. So, oops, that's backwards. Put it on the right way. So this is what the little Ceratote looks like. Isn't it gorgeous? I love this leather. The Horween leathers are just amazing. They're my favorite and they're the only leathers I want to use anymore because they're just so good. And um, I use the four ounce Horween Derby. So it's the tumbled leather. It has lots of variation, lots of pull up. Um, it'll age and patina over time and it's super lightweight. So this bag is probably under a pound. Yeah, definitely under a pound because there's no lining, no bulky hardware, just the snap. So it's super lightweight, but it's a good size. And it's just so pretty. And this pocket on the front is really big. So yeah, gorgeous little bag. So then I have two more of the Sarah totes that don't have zippers, but they do have some other little features. And this one is natural Derby Horween. Um, the natural is so gorgeous. It has so much pull up and it does patina and darken over time. And of course the matching sewn strap. The sewn straps do take longer to make because it's two pieces that I have to cut out to be the exact same, sew them together and all of that and then you know shape them. Whereas the bridal leather you just cut it and go. Um, so they take longer but they're so much softer and more comfortable in my opinion and lighter. So I just really really prefer the sewn straps. Tail keeper on here of course this one isn't the infinity strap. Um, and the special thing with these is I did clasp closures. I've never done one of these before, but I've seen a lot of makers doing them and I think they're really smart. It still is nice and secure, um, closed pretty well, but it's just, I don't know, it's just different and I really do like it. I think it's a really neat feature. And this one has a key keeper. The other one I didn't do a key keeper. Um, and unlined again, so it's just that nice fuzzy interior. And Horween leather smells so good, like the inside of a boot shop, like so, so good. Um, some leathers smell a little chemically and weird. These just smell like leather. So, natural. It will darken a patina. Nice, large exterior pocket, interior pocket. And let me show you this is my bag that I have been carrying for several months now, I think. And the top of it is the natural Horween, but because I've been carrying it, it has patinaed. Look at that gorgeous honey brown color. It's so pretty. It started out from this and now it's patinaed. It still has really nice pull up, really amazing character. Um, yeah, this is how the Horween ages. So you can see the nut brown, pretty uniform brown. The hide that I took this nut brown from didn't have a lot of pull up, whereas that this bag has a lot of pull up. This hide of nut brown didn't, but you can see that it did darken a little bit. So even the nut will patina um, and then the natural on top patina a lot. And then this configuration for the D-rings on the Ceratote has held up really, really well. It's just, it's amazing. This bag is my favorite. Um, it's like all I carry now <laughs> and it's really nice. So the Horween leathers, they are the best. Um, but the other good leather, as always, is Bison. So this pretty sure is Dark Pecan. Dark Pecan and Peanut were kind of similar, so I've mixed up which one was which. But this one is Tan Kodiak, Cow Leather, and Dark Pecan. I'm pretty sure it's Dark Pecan. No, this one's Peanut, I think. <laughs> I think this one's Peanut, um, so Peanut Bison. Yeah. I think these are different. I think this one is Dark Pecan, and this one is Peanut. It's a very slight difference, but I could be crazy. No, I think they're both dark pecan, actually. Looking at that hide, I know that hide is dark pecan. These are both dark pecan. Okay, 
I'm sure. These are dark pecan. Um, I only have one hide of the peanut, and I think I used it all up. So, And then the strap on this one, removable strap as always, is in the tan Kodiak. So the strap matches the dark accents on this bag. And then the tail keeper is in the dark pecan bison. So I really like this combination. The tan Kodiak has a lot of really nice pull up that is a nice golden color that just goes so well with the bison. And again, this bag has a clasp closure, which I just think is so cool. I really want to keep one of these, honestly, this one, because I love the dark and the lighter leather together, but I can't keep them all. I need, you know, to make money as well. So it has an internal pocket and a key keeper, and then the large external pocket. Isn't this bag cute? I really, really like this one. Um, so tempted to keep it. I was going to keep the natural Horween one, but I already have my bag with Horween. I already have a bag with Bison as well, though. It's a little bit short right now for me, but this is about the size on the body, what it looks like. Um, I don't remember the measurements of the Cerakote off the top of my head, but it's on the website. Isn't that cute? This one almost sold at this sh the show, but the um. The person looking at it, she was like, oh, but I'm here for gifts, not for myself. So she didn't get it, but almost. So it's so pretty. Really love this bag. The next three are Delilah's. So first we have Dark Pecan Bison Full Leather Delilah. The bison leathers have a lot of character. Um, I guess bison are just not graceful. <laughs> they get lots of scars. So they have lots of character, but they don't affect the durability of the leather. If it's a deep cut, I don't put it on a bag. So this is very superficial, not deep. It's just on the surface, just cosmetic. But if you love character of leather, we've got some stretch marks here, then bison leathers are really amazing for that. There's a superficial scar right here as well. I personally love that character but not everyone does and I'm, I'm okay with that. But I'm not gonna waste a bunch of leather from a hide to avoid something that isn't gonna affect the durability and I think adds beauty from the life of the animal. So some of my bags won't have any character because that's just how the hide was and where I was able to cut from, but I'm not gonna avoid a piece if it's gonna waste a lot of leather when I think it's beautiful. So um, this one has a braided strap Delilah is a nice big bag and then a crossbody. I think this is set kind of short for me right now, but that's what it looks like on the body. It's a nice deep bag as well. And then the inside is a really pretty forest theme lining. We've got some mushrooms, a moth, um, a little snail down there and some flowers. I thought that a dark lining would mean I couldn't find my stuff, but this bag opens wide enough that I've had no issues um, with darker linings. I did put my stuff in this bag for just a minute to see how it would be, and I, I don't have any problems, but I am used to the configuration of my bags with one pocket on this side, three cloth pockets on this side, and so I put my stuff in the same way every single time so I know where everything is pretty easily. But isn't this bag pretty? Um, this one's not on the website right now, so if you're interested, just shoot me a message um, and I can send an invoice for it. It's got a nice braided zipper pull, all antique brass on this one. Yeah, it's really pretty. I love this leather. Okay, and then we have two of the Delilah's with wool. This one I'm super tempted to keep, honestly. Am I saying that about every bag? I want to keep them all. But I actually might keep this one. Maybe. No, I'm not. I'm going to make myself one just like this. 
because I really love the tan Kodiak with the wool. The only reason I'm not going to keep this one is because I don't love the lining for myself personally, um, but this one is a blemish bag and often I'll keep the blemish bags for myself because I don't mind the blemishes and I know if anything serious happens I can fix it, but it's just a cosmetic blemish. If it had a lining that I loved, I would keep it in a heartbeat. Um, but I don't love the lining for myself personally. So first this one, this one is not a blemish. This one's perfect. And it is Toast Bison, which is one of my favorite leathers. It's so gorgeous. It's nice and soft. It's a little less structured than the Dark Pecan. Um, and then we have the Autumn Leaf lining in this one and the wool. And this color of the wool accents the leather so, so well. Oh yeah, and a scar here. Again, bison are just not graceful. I think that might be a freckle or a bug bite though. Um, it's definitely a part of the hide, but it's not um, not deep. Again, it's superficial. There's another little one right there. So you have to love that character. I do, because <laughs> I don't know, it's just a story of the, the cow or the bison. It's I like it. Um, and then again, the same setup with one pocket and a key keeper. And then on this side, three pockets. And you can see the wool is gonna make your bag a lot lighter because it's not as thick and it's gonna add more squish and drape. So that's something that you have to love as well. And then the strap in a matching leather. Um, this leather is too thick to fit over the buckles for the buckle straps. So what I do instead is I do two Chicago screws. It's very secure, it adds less weight and less hardware, and it's very easy to move. So you just unscrew them, put them into the holes that you want, and then it's adjusted to where you want it and you shouldn't have to mess with it again. So I really like the screws and I just love these bags. Because this wool is less structured than a leather, it just hugs your hip. It's so comfortable. And I can actually show you my personal bag. Hold on. In the Toast Bison. So this is my personal bag that I've been carrying for six months. Um, off and on, obviously, with my Horween bag. But this is the Toast Bison. And this is how well it's holed up. Ignore the brand. I did that really badly. Whenever I put them on my bags, they end up really not good. So I need to like put a patch over that. But the Toast Bison, it scratches some, but it will buff out. And I did get a little bit of gene transfer on this side, but um, initially you could see that it was a little bit blue, but as I continued to wear it and just let it patina and change, it just looks like a darker brown. So it's just patina from rubbing on my body. So that's how the toast breaks in. It also gets a little more squishy and yeah, I love this bag. When I carry it, it's just like a blanket. It's so comfortable. Sorry, I'm too lazy to put the strap on. <laughs> I put all the straps away when I have them stored on my shelf because otherwise the straps just go everywhere and get in the way. But that's how the Toast Bison breaks in and how much I love a bag with wool and how comfortable it is to carry. And it still stands up on its own. So yeah, that's, I love that bag so much. So this one, again, the wool and tan Kodiak. So the tan Kodiak has a little more structure than the Bison. So this bag won't get quite as drapey and floppy. You can see how much more structure it has already. And the tan Kodiak is such a gorgeous leather. That looks like a really big scratch, but in person it's not, it's not very bright at all. But tan Kodiak has really nice pull up, um, some pebbling here and there, lots of gorgeous variation. Look at that. I love tan Kodiak. I am 100% planning to make myself a bag with this wool, tan Kodiak, a brand on the Tan Kodiak that's a little cow. I'm gonna put that right front and center. And then I wanna do a different, um, probably the bison, the little bison uh, profile lining. I wanna put that on the inside of my bag. This one, I forget what it's called, Baroque something. <laughs> Excuse me, I just inhaled. <clears throat> Not air. 
Um, but this lining is really pretty. It's just not something that I personally super love. I was just trying to get lining that's a little more neutral. <coughs> is anyone else that hit their own spit every now and then? It happens to me all the time. Or water when I'm drinking, I inhale it and it's, I'm not supposed to. <laughs> Anyways, I'm okay. Um, yeah, this lining, I was looking for something a little more neutral um, and that would go with everything instead of like the cutesy ones that I really like. So I think it's really nice. I just personally really like the cutesy ones. But isn't it pretty? So that's this bag. I really, really love it. So this one is a blemish bag. And the reason it's a blemish bag, because I made an oopsie and it would just take way too much um, taking the bag apart to fix it, is I didn't hem the wool all the way to the edge. So you get a little bit, I've put a uh, fabric glue that shouldn't come off. Um, I've used the fabric glue on mohair and it stays in place for years, years and years. So it shouldn't come off, but it's just a little bit of a blemish that the edge of the wool is trying to roll out because I didn't sew the hem all the way to the edge. So that's my fault. <laughs> I'm really mad at myself about that because otherwise this bag would be absolutely perfect and like I said that glue isn't gonna go anywhere but it's just not as visually perfect as a bag that was hemmed all the way to the edge and that wool is nicely tucked in and under so that's why that's a blemish bag it's not a big deal. It's cosmetic only. I did fix it with glue. It's just not as pleasing to the eye. Here's my personal bag, how the wool is hemmed and rolled and tucked under rather than being able to see that edge. So that's the only issue with that bag, unfortunately. Um, like I said, if it had a lining that I really, really loved, I would keep it in a heartbeat. But I don't love the lining and I'm picky. Like if I'm going to keep a bag, it has to be... A different leather that I don't already have in my collection, a different lining I don't have, already have in my collection, and I'd have to love it. Otherwise, what's the point in keeping it when I could sell it and make myself one that's perfect for me? So, <clears throat> that's the only issue with that one. Otherwise, I think that's it. That's all the bags I had to show for today, and if you guys are interested, go jump on my website and buy them. Um, I think I can get them shipped before Christmas if ordered today. Today is kind of the last day if I ship it with UPS two day, which is a little more expensive, but I'm willing to do it if it gets them to you by Christmas and that's what you need or want. Um, and then this one, not on the website right now, message me if you're interested. Um, I just finished this one, so I just don't have it on the website yet. Um, I already made one just like it a while ago. Um, but I had a little bit left of this leather and lining, so I went ahead and made one more because I thought it was really pretty. I thought about keeping it, but it's just not, um, I just don't need more, but I love this lining. But anyways, message me if you're interested in this one, and I hope you guys have a great holiday um, and a happy new year. I probably won't make another one, so thank you so much for watching. Bye!